Hi, this is Jay. This is Bob. And this is Steve. We are Alpha Quadrant 6. We're a science fiction review show. Today we're going to talk about science fiction universes, and we're going to do lots of different things with these universes. But the first thing that we're going to do is talk about just the creation of a scientific universe. What does it mean? What do right. authors have to do? What do writers have to do to make us love or hate these worlds? Yeah, yeah. I mean, world building is a critical aspect of the science fiction, the speculative fiction genre, science fiction or fantasy or whatever. That's what I love about it, actually, is that you get to paint the sky, right? It's not like you're, you're, you're constrained by the real world. You could make the world whatever you want. And often, you know, like the, the I think, most successful, some of the best worlds are ones where the, the author probably wrote more background right. than actual exactly. novels. You're right, there's like more pages of just building that world. Um, and then once you build a really interesting world, then oftentimes, I mean, I won't say the story writes itself, but it's a lot easier to have stuff happen right. in that world. Of course, you're building yeah. intent, you're building an ecosystem. Yes, you know? like, exactly. Like we, uh, we like to play uh, role-playing games, mm -hmm. like tabletop games, and, and Steve and I are running a Star Wars game right now, which <laughs> right. we love. But what we did before we started the game was we fleshed out yeah. like a Tons lot of, of detail and characters and you know, lots of wheels are always turning. You know, and that's why, like, I think of Dune. When I think of world building, I think that the, the Dune universe hits the nail on the head as far as, like, how much work did, that, did the author, did Herbert, put mm -hmm. into writing it. And he wrote so much prequel to, to when the Dune books actually start that his son, after mm -hmm. Herbert died, when his son got his hands on the, those papers, he wrote four or five books that were prequels. I, I listened right? to them all. Me Tim too. Curry narrated them. He was magnificent. But the now, point being, though, it, that's how much work Herbert put into his universe. Oh, yeah, he was absolutely. writing a thousand years before the, the Dune books took place. Right. For me, good world building is evidenced when you listen to a story or read a story and you're like, man, I want, I want more stories in that, in that setting. Mm -hmm. Not even necessarily the same characters, but in that world, I want more. Or the, a good author will often do something like, they'll throw out a tidbit. They'll throw out a tidbit telling a story. They'll, they'll explain something very quickly, and you're like, damn, what's that all about? Yeah, yeah, yeah what's like, that? Like, yeah. He could devote an entire chapter to this one sentence he just threw out about his world yeah. that makes it more fleshed out, more realistic, more of a place that you want to just explore. Mm -hmm. Well, it's also good storytelling to feel like you're coming in in the middle of a story, mm -hmm. right? And that means you're coming in in the middle of the civilization, right? You can't make it seem like they, people were just hanging out waiting for the story to begin. You know what I mean? Yep. Like these, right. It has to have a history. The characters have a history, the world has a history, these nations, these civilizations have a history. And get, you're writing all of that makes the present time where the story is taking place feel so much more and real. More, more relevant. And more relevant well. and more engaging. And again, it just suggests so many plot elements because like, oh, you know what I mean? And it, you really want to, like you see a character, like if that character fought in the Clone Wars, well, what were the Clone Wars? You know what yeah. I mean? Like you, there ha that yeah. you have to have that background in order to throw out a line like that for that to inform a character in the current story. Yeah, like a character having a scar, right? Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you get that scar? The world has to have scars. Yes, the world has to have scars. Ah, but, nice. And even though it's not science fiction, um, Game of Thrones is exactly is, is like exactly oh, what Steve just said. Talk about you know him preparing for the story. That's to be told. almost one end of the spectrum because yeah. you know Martin even said yeah there are authors who they construct their narrative. And then there are other ones who are gardeners. They just want to plant things and then see what grows. Mm -hmm. And he, he ah, kind of looks at himself more as he's a gardener. And, yeah. he, and if you read the novels, like, yeah, man, this is like, he's in the weeds, <laughs> you know, in, yeah, in right. some of those later novels. I know, right? a lot of times it's but like... But the world is so rich. Right. He seems to be just like working to get his characters into the right place at the right time. <laughs> it's like, oh, I just beam them there, do something, man. Yeah, well, that's why he needs to like write science fiction into his fantasy novels. What I love, Scott Sigler, love this guy. He uh, he has a sprawling series of books that are, and you don't even really necessarily know it when you read them. But all of his books, some of them centuries apart, are all in the same universe. You know, his his Alive series, Infected, um, Crypt, the, foot, the football GF, stuff, GFL, um, fantastic stuff. And when I realized that all of them were actually tied together, like one of those books were the past of the of the really futuristic ones. It was his world building is amazing. It's just so enjoyable. Highly recommend it. So let's talk about. Yeah a few categories, right? We're going to talk about our favorite world mm -hmm. for whatever criteria you want to use. Okay. And okay. then if you had to live in one of these worlds, which one would you choose? Right. And then what is the one you would least want 
to live in. Sure, that's easy. Okay. So you, so what, Jay? We start with you. What's your just your favorite science fiction slash fantasy world? That just in terms of the literature. Uh, that's you know, it's like so hard because there's different <laughs> reasons why I like different worlds. I mean, you know, the, the couple come to mind. I mean, I, I really do adore Star Wars because of its scope. Um, and a lot of that scope, of course, comes from the extended universe. You know, mm -hmm. like we're talking about a lot of the authors and comic books and, and cartoons and, and all yeah. that stuff. Um, there's just, it, it seems to be almost infinite, right? You know, there's like thousands of planets to go to. There's all different types of creatures mm -hmm. and all different types of socioeconomic places going on. The outer rim, the inner planets, you know, there's, there's a lot there. Um, and of course, I love Star Trek. Hey, you got to pick one, brother. I know, What's but I'm, I'm, I'm building it up. You can't just, yeah. I can't just pick one. you got to pick one. It's a Sophie's Choice. Oh, God. Star Trek or Star Wars. But what, <laughs> but what is it? Just like my gut love, which well, one yes. do I love the most? Favorite for any, any reason. Not necessarily one you want to even live in, Jay. Just this is just the one your, you think. Favorite. As, a, as, a, as a science fiction world, which is, what do you think is the most Star creative? Wars. Star Wars has the most going for it. So Star Wars brings up another element that we didn't talk about, and that's the metaphysics, mm -hmm. right? So you have mm. the history, the scars, you know, you're picking up in the middle of this really rich story. But in science fiction, you also get to make shit up, right? Yeah. You could make up laws of physics if you want to. Or the force. You could yeah. make up things like the force, which throws an interesting little curveball or element into your whole story. Mm -hmm. Or magic, if it's a more of a fantasy you know, universe. You get to decide what the rules are, mm -hmm. right? What the rules are in your universe. So Star Wars, I agree, is a, is a wonderful, compelling you know, universe in which to tell stories. Because everything, I think what I like best about Star Wars is the stakes are always so high. Mm -hmm. There's you always know? a struggle going it's on. It's a struggle and the stakes are really high and the characters know it and, they, and they're in it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's just, it's a great uh, setting for storytelling. I'm not crazy about the metaphysics though, I have to say. I mean, that's fine. The Force, it's kind of iconic. It's a little superficial. Well, all right. I can understand the superficial idea i get that i think uh you know we most people know that lucas was using joseph campbell's mm -hmm. journey of a hero you know the whole the story epic the, the yeah. epic quest yeah. which luke was on we find you know we, we find many characters actually mm -hmm. on their own type of epic quest um i love that and i've been i was a fan of joseph campbell mm -hmm. 30 years ago so when you know i didn't even know star wars incorporated yeah. that into it bottom line though is that i have to say this that i think Star Wars to me is more the untold stories, the stories that haven't mm -hmm. been told yet, because it, there's so we could do so much better mm -hmm. than what Disney has done. Well, I think the best example of that is Rogue One. Yeah, they Rogue took this One little is. throwaway yeah. side untold story and they made a whole movie out of it, and it was like the best of the newer crop of movies, yeah. in my opinion. Now that I look back on them, even though I, Nine hasn't come out yet, I <laughs> agree. How What's about your, you? All right, what well, do you got, I was Bob? Go to Bob? For me, I, this was a little difficult until I just started thinking about Star Trek. I mean, in terms of favorite, not necessarily the one I would want to live in, which would be a good choice, um, but just my favorite for so many reasons. First off, I lived my life watching Star Trek. Mm -hmm. we, my mm -hmm. earliest memories are watching Star Trek. I remember looking at a, a ship, a Constitution-class starship, other than the Enterprise, and thinking, whoa, what's that? Yeah. Uh, that doesn't make sense. How, I, that's, how, that's how young I was. I didn't even know what was going on. Yeah. It's just been part of our lives, and we've been watching it from the series then to the conventions we went to, the Star Trek store we went to in, in Manhattan in yeah. 1976. Yeah. Um, I wasn't with you. I was. You, you, you were like you guys a, were with Irwin, our friend yeah. Irwin Waller. <laughs> I still have things I bought at that Star Trek store. Yeah. I still have that yeah. stuff. You have the da 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 da. What is that thing? The uh, the, uh, the planet the, 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 um, So. Uh, and then then the movies came out, and then the series Next Gen, and all the other wonderful series. It's been. It's been a, a, something that's been in our lives for so franchise. long. Yeah. Tremendous franchise, and it's exploding even right now. Yeah, it's exploding into, into probably more than it ever has. Mm. And I think within a year, we'll have more franchises and things going on than we've ever had. So, it, and it's just, I love its utopian view, the fact that, that humanity will evolve to such a state uh, so far beyond what we're experiencing in modern culture, mm -hmm. um, where everyone, everybody, everybody is equal. And there's- I mean, you almost convinced me to switch over in a sense. Well, I, mean, well, I, I vacillate between the two so much yeah. You're basically for, saying it's a sentimental favorite. That, that's part of it. That's part of the reason why yeah. it's my favorite for But wait, me. it's but still I, valid today, though. I mean, but, I, and I, but I love so many episodes that I love. Come on, the, the Borgs and the, the aliens that have been introduced, the character actors, Q, there's just so much to love. Data, there's just. I will add Spock. something. I mean, there's so many fantastic characters. The, I can't count them. There's a lot of people to look up to in Star Trek. Yeah. Like, I looked up to Captain Kirk yeah. and Spock and McCoy and most of the people. Scotty, yeah, most of them. So it, it was, I think it was. 
um, among the first, if not the first, real major science fiction world that took a deliberately positive, optimistic view of the future. And that set it apart. I mm -hmm. think that's why yeah. it's always on, going to be on the short list and is a sentimental favorite. So I have two, hey. but I'm going to pick one. Sophie, so you better. I'm gonna pick one. <laughs> he was sticking it to me. I'm going to mention my runners Steve's up. Steve's like, I have 13 that we have to go over in detail. I'm not gonna go. So I want to I wanna pick Dune. The world of Dune is my I have my two favorite. favorites in 12 parts. Yeah. Go ahead. You know what sucks? Every time somebody right. says what their favorite is, I'm like, that's my favorite. <laughs> I know. There's so many more. All right, Dune. So, Give me Dune. Uh, Why so Dune, first Steve? of all, because of because well, for a few reasons, uh, as some of Jay already mentioned, is there, you know Herbert like wrote this oh. ten thousand year history, you know, yeah. leading up to Amazing. this point in of contention in the in in our future, and it, he made some very interesting choices that I, I love all of the choices that he made. First of all, there's no aliens. Yeah. Humans just take over the galaxy and fill the void of the galaxy. There's no aliens. Which is, no sapient aliens. Yeah, right? well, which hold is, on. Well, it, that, 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 that. But that's an interesting choice. It's a choice that's different than so many. It is different. But what about the uh, what about the worms? Uh, worms man? Yeah, I know. But it, that's it, they're not like they're not like conventional yeah. aliens. You, would you call a worm stupid to its mouth? <laughs> there, 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 <laughs> are, <laughs> there are there are humanoid aliens walking around. Right, right, right. You know? yeah. right. That's what he um, meant, Jay. Another one, <laughs> also unique. As yeah. far as I know, it's totally analog. Yeah. Because they ban computers. I'd even say very unique. But yeah. no, I wouldn't. It's, it's, but a, it's, that's, it's that mostly wasn't analog. It, it's, it's, no, it's, well, it, no, it's really completely analog. What about X? Lots of machines on, on X. X. <laughs> I know. Well, they're, just, they're, they're flirting you know, on X with the machines that can learn. Mm -hmm. But it's still, they're still analog. For the most part, it's analog. Yeah. Right. And uh, that makes it romantic. I know. That makes it something right? cool There's something, about it. it gives it a vibe that you just don't see it. I remember like when the Science Fiction Channel did their series on like 10 episodes. Uh, series. They, it was Face terrible because oh they made it digital. Like there were computer graphics. Like, hello, there's no computer. Stop. It was, com it was, yeah. Yeah, it like, was terrible. When you have to say, hey, producer and director, did you read the books? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah how no, could you right, that? Right. And then, you know, again, the, the metaphysics of folding space and using spice. The other thing is, so without computers, humans had to find ways in order to run a civilization, to like a mentat, they had to, to be become computer. computers. They had mentats and the Bene Gesserit and using spice to enhance the mind. It was so creative and it created such a different world, mm -hmm. um, which again supported multiple you know, series you know, we, right, in right. that world, both you know, prequels, prequels and, and the, sequels. Yeah, it was just tremendous. Right. It is, to me, the most compelling world building for science fiction that I've seen. My runner's up, I know you're, you're dying to know what the runner-up is. I know is. what your runner-up is. What do you want Doctor Who? No. Who? No, it's the foundation. It's foundation. It's Asimov's oh, foundation, yes. oh, right? I mean, come on, robots and, talk about linking up different, yeah. you know. Yeah. Robots and foundation. Robots and foundation, <laughs> the whole thing comes full circle. They're all linked up eventually. Beautiful yeah. world building. It's, that's, that's Asimov's life work in science fiction. Mm -hmm. And and again, a tremendously right. interesting, well fleshed out universe. And we may have a series later this yeah. year. Yeah, that's around, so built weird. around so you know, the laws of robotics and that whole idea, yeah. very compelling. But I, I give it, I give the little. Yeah, uh, tip to tip, yep. hat tip again. To you this. know, I hear you say that, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know, it's funny because Star, it's there, there's some things about our personalities mixed in yeah. here. Because Star Wars has like a, I hate to use the word juvenile, but it does have kind of like a surfacey it's, thing to it. When you yeah. compare it to a brand like. Like Dune. Yeah, yeah right. right. Asimov. Plus, and you were a little kid when you fell in love with that, that movie. Right. Yeah, that right? was my, that, you, know, you know, growing up watching Star Trek, I was right there with you guys. Yeah. I mean, it's a space it, opera, Star Wars, right? But Star Wars flipped the, the script for us. Yeah. Star Wars like was the first movie I remember where we sat in there, we watched it, and then we were like, we are not leaving the theater. We yeah. sat right <laughs> through the next yeah. show. That's true. That's yeah. true. You know, like it totally blew my mind. And, and being four or five years younger than you guys, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Use guys being a, you know an Italian, but being like <laughs> this little kid that fell in love, everybody did. But I was younger than you, so I I had this absolute romantic connection. Like I was playing with the toys in a way you guys weren't playing. True, you true. Know? Mm -hmm. So I get that. Oh boy. But then you know <laughs> what Star does that mean, Jay? <laughs> but, <laughs> Darth Vader. But Star Trek, Star Trek captured me before Star Wars did, though. Don't forget. Yeah. I mean, Captain Kirk. I said he was my hero from when I was a little kid. Spock was my hero. You know? More than Kirk, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, of course. It's it, the competency porn. I think that was the, yeah. our first exposure to, yeah. that, in, to that extent. 
where it's like you admire people because they're smart and they work hard and they are do and they do the right thing and they're responsible and they're clever like they're and they're responsible. And responsible. Yeah. yeah, right, right. We could use a little bit more of that in this culture. I mean, right. as role models, they were fantastic. But Dune has a. Uh, this deep, dark underbelly, yeah. you know, there's all of this. Well, that's the other thing, uh, there's a million worlds. They, make, they say that many times, it's a galaxy-wide civilization, there's a million worlds. And also, you know, you're talking about romantic, the, you know, the houses have dukes, it's, it's, it's yeah. you know, it's yeah. feudal, it's medieval, but it, it totally works. And each one has its own character. Like, and they're warring right. with each other. The Harkonnens yeah. yeah. and Gidi Prime compared to you know, the Atreides. Right. I mean... But don't it, forget, Steve... It, again, the stakes are high. The stakes are high. Part of your... I think part of your feelings and our feelings for that for that uh, universe is the is the Lynch movie as well. Which, oh, yeah. Which, which, which added, like, a coating to that universe yeah. that, we, that we can't extract from our, no, our minds. No, it was just such point. a beautifully shot... That is the Dune universe it, in my mind. Right, yeah. Yeah. right. All the other ones. Absolutely. All right, so... A lot of uh, people don't like it, but, I mean, I think even if you don't, don't like <laughs> aspects of it, there is... Something that, that Lynch did that brought it to life, you know, like put, it was beautiful. Just. Yeah, and you know the Fremen. I had, before we switch off of that real quick, the Fremen have this wonderful religion, you know, like mm. it's a it's a really cool yeah. backstory they're religion Hebrews, that they yeah. yeah pretty much like I, I like how yeah. they're and they're the, they're the underdog yeah and they have these secrets and they have all sorts of like mm. you know the hidden strength that was just percolating at yeah. the bottom. That was that's yeah. a great. Society, the yeah. Fremen, yep. uh, science fiction society, just tremendous. Yep. And that's just one aspect of the whole world. So okay, just just it. for fun, as a sideline idea, what would it, what would Star Wars have been like if Herbert wrote it? Like, uh, here's the Star Wars universe. Flesh it out your way. Yeah, what yeah, would yeah. that be like? Yeah, we'll never know. <laughs> yeah, we'll never know. universe. Okay. Well, we'll so know when AI comes. There's so many. Sorry, there's Bob. so many worlds we're not talking about though that were fantastic. Yeah, I know. It's, can't get it's, to it's an endless supply. But we've talked about three so far. So, so let's so, go. So <laughs> these are the universes that we just love. Yeah. How about the ones that you want to live in? If you had to be transported to a to a, a science fiction universe yeah. and live the rest so of your life there, let's right. set the now, stage though. Because yeah, yeah, yeah who stage. are you? What year is it? Where in the society are you? So I recommend. So this is a thought. Um, experiment in ethics, mm -hmm. right? If you are designing the ethical laws and rules of a society, you have to make the decision, would you want to live in that society if you didn't know what what point, station, what station that yeah. society you would live in? Hmm. So it's easy to say, yeah, I would live in that society as a rich guy, you know, right, or as a privileged you know, right. you know, member of that society. But if you were rolling those dice and you could land it anywhere at any socioeconomic status, any whatever right. in out group, what's a, and and you have to live in that society now. Design the laws, knowing mm -hmm. that's the case. It's like okay, well now I'm going to make sure that no matter where I land, it's a decent life. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So, so that's go for that's it. I think the way that we should right. approach this. Yeah, that that's fine. Um, for me, the universe that I fell in love with the past few years was Neil Asher's. Polity universe. I've mentioned it here and there. Yeah. This is a series of like 15 books that I've read. The, to me, this, this is the, the, my favorite science fiction of all time. The, the technology is the perfect technology for, for me. I mean, uh, in terms of the spaceships using runcible gates and runcible, runcibles to, to, to pretty much superluminally travel anywhere they want. So getting around the galaxy is not a problem. Mm -hmm. um, there's also AIs. I love AIs. AIs are fascinating. Um, but these are benign AIs. These are nice, for the most part, AIs okay. that have taken over. They have taken over uh, uh, human civilization, but they're they're like overseers. They're 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 like um, uh, here's a, here's a good example. When they took over in the history of this universe, when they took over, it was called the Silent War. They just like bam, they just did it. Like yep, we're in charge now. Sorry, because they were controlling so much. No, not one person was was killed. It was like no bloodshed. And nobody complained. And uh, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure people complained, but now they're like, of course, because they're these are now. Imagine this is an AI that's in crystal that is about a million times a million times smarter than, than a person. They could run a simulation of your mind inside a little part a part of them and run it through centuries of life. Don't I ever mean, point at me again. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so the AIs are extremely powerful and extre uh, and benign and. They are, they're just running human civilization. Uh, there's you just want to be an AI bitch. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm, just, I'm, just getting start, I'm just getting started. Now, for the, for the humans, for the humans, humans are, for the most part, humans can be pretty much what we are, but live, but live for centuries. Uh, okay. So, so uh, longevity is not a problem. If you wanted to, you could get your, you can get your mind transferred into a crystal, an, an AI crystal, and they put, they would put it in a golem body, which is basically, it's a, it's a robot body that's, that's, that looks as human as you want it to look, but 
this is a hardy mother. This is some. This is a, a machine. Sounds good to me. That, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's like the, the, the perfect robot body. It looks human, feels human, but it's like crazy strong, crazy durable, and amazingly tough. And, Can you still eat? And uh, in this, in that body, yeah. Um, can you enjoy food? Probably. Okay. I, I'm not, I'm, can it be transferred remember. into a biological host? Uh, from they could they could do so much that yeah. nothing would surprise me. They um, so so it's got all these these aspects that I would love. You've got you've got benign AIs. You've got a super longevity. You've got amazing amazingly high tech devices mm -hmm. and, and spaceships and just and the novels themselves. I've listened to. 15, like 14, 15 of these novels. The, the, novel, the stories are fantastic. This guy writes battles like I've, I have never mm -hmm. read in my life and just so compelling. So this, I'm just entranced by this entire uh, poly universe and a lot of the characters that are in it and what happens. And, and sure, there's crazy stuff that happens, but, but I would, if I were on Earth, I would feel safe because Earth has never been attacked in all of these, in all of these books. Earth is, Earth is safe and, and the world's around it. Uh, so it's not like I'm living like on, say, in, in the Doctor uh, Hooniverse or Hooverse, and you never know what alien's are going to come down and, and destroy mm. the planet. That's or, kind of exciting. Though. Well, it's, it's, it's exciting <laughs> to watch on TV, but not the people that are living there. Yeah. Or, yeah. or even uh, Stargate, which I love. Fantastic show. But um, Sam saved the planet like 10 times, 12 times. I don't want to live in a place that's going to be at that that much risk. Yeah, that makes sense. As enjoyable as it might be, I'd, so that's so that's my favorite universe, the Apollo Universe by Neil Asher. Read the books; they're unbelievable. What do you guys? What's your favorite? Where do you want to live? Where do you want to live for centuries? I, you know, it's the different parts of me yearn for different worlds. But I mean, I think if it, under the auspice of what we're talking about here, I might have to pick Star Trek because great choice. You know, I worry that. You know, how, how, where would you end up, right? So we're saying somewhere in middle class. You're not just, gonna... Yeah, you could land up anywhere, but statistically speaking, you're probably gonna be somewhere in the middle. So I, I would tend to think that living a, in a Federation-run planet, you would have the opportunity for education. Mm -hmm. You would have the opportunity to ha own advanced technology. Holodex. Hol yeah, holodex, <laughs> leisure time. Holodex and replicators. Health, health you know, <laughs> Extreme, extraordinary health, probably, you know, we don't really get into it with Star Trek. They don't, but, but they don't have... A really extended lifetime. That, no. I was just going to say that. That's like, we don't problem. we don't hear about it, but we don't actually we don't know that people don't live a hundred. We do. 200 years, we do. We? It's canon because it's it's mentioned how old people are. We know that they, you know humans don't live that much longer than than they do now. Maybe a yeah. hundred, but you're not. They're they, not living a thousand years. They didn't extrapolate that. the the technology into. They didn't medicine to that degree. I mean, I think it would be it makes sense that people should be living hundreds of years or whatever. Right. You know, technology could suspend it as long or extend their lives mm -hmm. as long as they wanted. I would imagine. But the point is, though, that one of the cool things about Star Trek is that there are places like the frontier where there's still something to fight for, right? So the fight of good and evil is happening in outer space right. for the most part. But, but there is lots of planets where there's safety, you know, going to Vulcan, going to Earth, you know. Vulcan got destroyed. <laughs> yeah. and, and the Borg were on our doorstep, and yeah. as well as that, you that know. Probe. Whale, that probe. probe the whale, that probe. had to be saved by the whale, yeah. yeah. I mean, so Earth is not entirely safe in the Star Trek universe. It's, I think, statistically speaking, yeah, so I would give safety, it gets, yeah. a, it gets a check. Right. It's not yeah. perfect because there are hostile creatures out there. So and you could metagame it and say the Earth's never going to be destroyed. Yeah, we know that yeah. it's not going to be destroyed. But so I also think, though, just as a person living in that world, you're, you're not going to be stuck in a situation where you can't make something yeah. of yourself. Now, I, I have come to realize that life has a lot more meaning if you have struggle. Mm -hmm. Your struggle doesn't have to be horrific. You know, It could be just, I have goals that I want to achieve. Yeah. Um, and I like f always having something to fight for and something to build. You know, like this studio is a perfect example. Like it's a total work in progress. I right. will never think it's done. It's always I've got to keep right. making it better. And I like having a lot Trust of those us, things. I'll never think it's done. Yeah, no, I won't. But I always, I always like feeling like I have a lot of things going on at the same time. Yeah. And, I, and if I live in a world where it's too easy, right, right, right? now that's the problem. And I that's... know myself very well. If I lived in that AI world, I would just hollow deck myself into. No, nothing. I wouldn't be a person anymore. I would just be entertaining myself to the point where I didn't fight for anything legit in way too long. You know, like, you know, I'm literally, my wife and I are like just on the cusp of both deciding that we're going to learn the piano right now at this point in our lives. Because mm -hmm. we got our son a piano. So I'm like, I want to learn a piano, you know? Like, I, I just feel it's good like. It's to do pick up like that when you're older. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good thing. But you get the point. Yeah. So my point is, I want to live in a world that isn't too clean and too easy. I want there to be something to fight against. 
Mm -hmm. And yeah. if I really want to fight against it, then I could join Starfleet and right. I could, you know, I could fight against real yeah. evil out there. So, what do you got? Star Steve? Trek is Star Trek is, is, a, is a solid choice. It's, just, it's a solid choice. Um, I would. So I was thinking of a couple of things. One is like uh, for the reason you did altered carbon world where you, you're a sleeve, you get to go into different bodies, you're basically immortal. Yeah, but the world is dystopian. But the man. world's a little dystopian, so it doesn't check enough boxes it's there. It's a lot dystopian. <laughs> one 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 idea I had was the was the uplift wars Brin, world by with, Brin. with David Brin. Um, so this is a world again, world building really we had to mention it just for the world building aspect of it. So humans are wolflings, you know, most species in the in the, in the galaxy have been uplifted by other species. Right. And uplifted into There's like an endless chain of being uplifted sapiens, yeah. and nobody knows who the original ones were. And then they find humanity and we don't have any patrons. Nobody uplifted us. We're wolflings. And it's it's like controversial. Did we evolve on our own? Is that even possible that yeah. a species could evolve to sentience on their own? Or did somebody uplift and then abandon them? Right, which, which is a, like a crime, a high right. crime. But by then, we had already uplifted chimps and dolphins. So by their laws, yes. we were patrons because we had uplifted our own species. And so now we are thrown into this hostile but really interesting galactic, or is it intergalactic, civilization. And we have access to the library, oh, which is like boy. all the knowledge over the last billion years. Encyclopedia that would be a Galactica. That would be a okay, that's a pretty cool world. compelling yeah. world to live in, yeah. you know, given that, oh, here, you could just spend your time researching in the library. How do they travel in that world, long distances? They, they have Steve. interstellar travel. They have ships of the right, but travel. There isn't any, like, teleportation, right? There's a, there's a, that's another box I would want to tick. I want to be able to see... Interesting places. I don't want to be stuck in our solar system, right? right? If I want to go to another fantasy world, I want to at least be one where I could zip around the galaxy. So that yeah. yep. you have to have that as well. Um, but I'll be taking the shuttle down to the surface. Thank you. Yeah, no, no transporter. No, yeah. no disintegrations uh, yeah. for me. No disintegrations. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, there's so many that I think would fill those criteria. Yep. But that's a you know. Brin's world. That's a good choice. I got to read that again. It's been so mention. long. It's good fantastic. stuff. I good think stuff. it would be just as a quick side note. It's, it's, it, Switching into a fantasy realm real quick. It would be really fun to be in the Harry Potter world as a mate, as a wizard. As a wizard. As a wizard, right? Yeah. In, that, in that half of the world, it would be fun to go to the school. And but what if you didn't know if you were going to be a muggle or a wizard? Well, that's the problem. If you're a muggle, then who cares? Harry Potter. It's like being in this world. You know? Yeah, I know. You're right. Just had to say it, though. I, I just, just, that's just a, become that's... friends with a witch or a wizard. Yeah. yeah. Clean the dishes. All right, so we picked our... You know, we pick the ones that we probably think would be safe and we'd fun right. to live in. What's the most horrific world you would never want to live in? Your least, your last choice. Like, that's the one world you absolutely, absolutely would not want to yeah. live in. Okay. Well, well, the Mirror Mary universe in Star Trek is bad. Yeah. Because everyone's an asshole. It's so cutthroat. Everyone's an asshole. It, it's yeah. right. It's too cutthroat. Dune, I think, would be a very bad universe no, to live dude, in. come on. If you were, if you lived... If you're you know, a duke. In the, yeah, if you're in the... Well, oh, wait, yeah. If, if you're a good house, house, if, you're, if you lived with a benign house, of course, yeah. It would be, it would, it wouldn't be, how different would it be than our world? It, it would be an analog, yeah, you know, you still get to travel. benevolent ruler. They um, still had tech, just was analog tech. But, I mean, there's a lot of nasty things about the Dune universe. Yeah. You know, that's, it's scary. You know, the Harkonnen planet is a, it's a nightmare that's planet. That's true. Yeah, uh, that's true. But it just wouldn't be at the bottom of my list. Yeah, you're, you're the, right. The... Right. The chance of falling into like a Harkonnen slave pit is too great yeah. to, to make that my choice no, to live there. You want a heart plug, man. Yeah, right. You want a heart oh. plug. But um, it wouldn't right. be my last choice because there are some okay. worse worlds. Bot out there. The bottom of my list, as much as I love it, Terminator. I mean, yeah. I think it's kind of <laughs> yeah, a no brainer, right? Bad. Assuming it, like the apocalypse happens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Terminator is interesting because. First off, we, we, love, we love the movies, but secondly, the, the world is filled with these amazing computers and sentient and sapient robots and all this great technology, but they want to kill me. They want to kill all of humanity. Yeah. And, I'm, and if I'm alive, I'm lucky just to be alive. So that's, of that's course, that's an obvious, no-brainer. That's no a profound brainer. dystopian future that, yes. because yeah. even, even when apocalyptic. The, the humans are going to win, right? Like we, we hear rumors that the humans were winning. Um, and that's why they started to send Terminators back in time to kill right. John well, Connor. Yeah. Yep. But even they if they even win, won. what do they got? They, yeah, what do they got? I they mean, got... They, what, what kind of rebuilding could they do? Maybe they could steal the, the technology that the AIs developed. Sure, sure. But there's always, and there's always that risk of someone's going to turn on a robot and then who knows what's going to happen. But yeah, so that's, to me, that's almost too obvious. Like, so, it's like very little imagination. Something to, to similar that. to that, though, is the, uh, the Matrix mm -hmm. world. Because, you know... Ah, I disagree. Be, well, wait, now hold on. Because at the end of the Matrix film... You know the third Matrix movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What was the real? Who remembers what happened at those sequels? <laughs> no, but who? But what was the final thing? Did everyone get to stay in the system, or were they going to come out of the system? 
Jeez, I don't even remember. It's right? been so I don't long. Really actually, yeah, I remember what was the very, very final outcome of the third movie. It was so bad. I, 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 yeah. I but let's really stick, let's the stick with movie. The Matrix as it was set up. Yeah. Set up by the Okay, first so then you're just a human living in a right. Well, you have there's two reality. states. You're either in the matrix or you're woke, really or woke. Or you're or you're in this crappy real world. Yeah, yeah. don't it don't swallow, don't take the red pill. And then you but then you're fine. You're in re, we could be in it right yeah, now. Yeah, but it's boring. There's like a no stakes, you know, Nothing on, the cusp is happening, of, yeah. on the cusp of the year 2000 at all times. Yeah, but in terms it's of meant to be stable and boring. And, and I think they reboot it every once in a yeah. while when things don't go the way they like. Yeah, but in terms of dystopias, dy dystopias, that's I take that over over, over yeah, the, 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 yeah. there's, there's definitely worse choices. Oh my God! So yeah, that's not the bottom of the pit for me at all. I was comparing the Terminator World to um, when you know living outside of the Matrix. Yeah, they yeah. Because it, it's a that's, it's a nuclear. It's similar. Yeah. It's it's a Holocaust world. AI yeah. trying to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So, but I mean, it's almost not fair. Like any post-apocalyptic world is going to be horrible. Yeah. Right. There's, okay. And most of them are going to be equally horrible. Right. You know. So then, then if we if we don't if we limit if we limit eliminate post-apocalyptic worlds. Then I'll Just, take the mirror universe. Yeah, the mirror universe like a self-sustaining world, not right. one that's crumbling into yeah, it. Yeah, I would okay, not want to... That's I, fair. I, I am exactly programmed to not live in the mirror mirror yeah. universe from Star Trek. I could not... I'm not cutthroat. That's I can't definitely on my short way. list, yeah. yeah. All right, so I named mine. You, you gave yours. What do you got, Steve? Um, so... I don't know because I, I was going to say the mirror universe as well. Well, that's all right. We, yeah. we can agree. No, but I think I want. I have to come up with another one. That it, now, and I already cut myself off by saying no post-apocalyptic <laughs> ones. So I mean, you guys mentioned good ones, you know, yeah. and obviously the post-apocalyptic one carries a lot. But I would say a world like the Hunger Games, right? It's not technically post-apocalyptic. It's a self-sustaining world. It's just re extreme in that you have a small, powerful elite. Mm -hmm. Who are all jerks? I mean, we wouldn't want to live there yeah. in the capital. But they just and then everyone well. else is has is is in misery. Well, it's, it's levels of misery. It's yeah. level because like the, the the people that live in in District, uh, 12. District twelve are in bad shape. Yeah. but districts one to five is not so bad. It, it's still bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like lower middle class, you know. Like the, and uh, and basically, you're serving these elite assholes, you know. Yeah. That's, it, that's a broken world. It's broken. Right? It's not post-apocalyptic, it, but it's totally broken. Yeah. And, and super depressive. I mean, you can't you can't get a leg up. The only thing that you could do is win the uh, yeah. the Hunger Games, which is like right. But I would say actually, it just just occurred to me. There's probably a world even worse than that. But it also, you have to say like, where in that world do you live? Let's say we live in the equivalent of the United States in that world, mm -hmm. in in a world that's a not too far in the future, dystopian, religious dystopian world, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, The course. Handmaid's Tale? Yes, that would be horrific. Oh. Imagine living in, what's, what, do they, um, what do they call their, their country? In Gilead. Gilead is their name for what they turn the United States into. Right. So, Oof, as, a, yeah, as someone that's horrible. just watching the TV show, it's I get horrible. scared and creeped out watching the TV and show. And I get the same feeling when I watch The Man in the High Tower. Yeah. So huh. that's an alternate world where the, the Nazis, yeah. Very The Man similar, in the High yeah. Castle, they, they um, the Nazis win, the Japanese and the Nazis basically divide up the world and they're like blowing up the Statue of Liberty. It's like, yeah, yeah. again, you're, it's you're, not post-apocalyptic, it's just that the bad guys won, yeah, bad guys and, won. and they turned it into a, you know, a, a night totalitarian nightmare. Yep. That's a that's a close call between those yeah. two between you're, Gilead and Nazi America. Yeah, Gilead, you're not living anymore. I mean, you are just a slave to the state. And any, I wouldn't want to be anyone in that society. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay, so right, moving away choices, from these guys. depressing yeah. worlds that we love. I mean, man, do I love the ha A Handmaid's Tale. I love that show. I can't wait for it to come out. Um, great storytelling. Just wouldn't want to live there. Great acting. Yeah. So, what was the final thing that you wanted to talk? We're going to do the head to head, right? Well, yeah. yeah, we'll do head. Yeah, so let's do. We'll do head to head where I, I each of us one will throw out like, okay. all right, guys, here's two, here's two uh, universes. Which, which would you rather? It's like a would you rather game. Okay. So, uh, so I'll go first. So I'll say, Battlestar Galactica or District Twelve Hunger Games. So where are where are we on Battlestar Galactica on the ship? You're in the ragtag fleet. Yeah, you're in the ragtag right? fleet, and they're never going to find it. Uh, to I would land rather right. I would rather live in District Twelve. Oh man, that is tough. Now I'll tell you why. This is important. Because as bad as it is in the Hunger Games, you're outside. Mm, you know, okay. you're not restricted by these ships. You're not hearing the hum of a ship all your life, living in in cold steel. I mean, I would rather be hungry, living in the outdoors. And at least being with my family, or what's left of my family, than being on this freaking ship. Like, you're, you're, those people are hanging out with people that they were in the military with. They're not even with their families. 
Well, some so, people are family. I mean, there are some, but there. but a lot of them are military. No, there's like fifty thousand civilians. The only the only people on the uh, military were you're in right. the battle. Yeah, you're lives, right. You're the, right. The fleet is mainly civilian. But still, you're you're living past a, a time when your world blew up. Yeah. So that it, it's a, that's a good choice because yeah. I mean, so what's your life like in District Twelve? You go down to the mines all day. You come back home. You have your crappy crust of bread. You're hungry all the time. You have no rights, basically. What do you do? The best thing you can hope for is a rebellion where you're probably going to die. Mm -hmm. On the uh, Battlestar Galactica, yeah, you know, it's advanced technology. You're on a ship. But I agree. The thing is, for me personally, I think I would get stir crazy being on a ship 24-7 and never, like, being outside. Ugh, I don't know if I could take yeah. that. Yeah. I don't even know what, what, how, how I would react. And they don't have any holodecks or anything that I've ever no, seen in Battlestar Galactica. And it's pretty it's gritty. And the it's newer, have some good VR, It's pretty though. gritty. In the new yeah. Battlestar Galactica, there was one ship that had, like, an outdoor environment. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That, you know, if I was on that ship, maybe. But still, just knowing I'm on, you know, any You'd probably be on a shitty ship. Could yeah. blow me up. Yeah, yeah, some of those ships are nasty. I mean, it's yeah. like refugee yeah. style, you know, living yeah. with flickering like lights. Like steerage. You're, you're living your life in steerage. Yeah. Basically, so, so I, I pick District Twelve. What's your pick? Yeah, put your chip down. Yeah, if I, I had agree. to, if I had to, I guess I'd have to go to District Twelve. Yeah, you'd be with me then. Yeah, I'd we'll, go we'll, hunting and deer yeah. or whatever. But yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, um, good choice. That, that was a good choice. There were, yeah, there were interesting similarities. All right, what do you guys got? So because we we already talked about Star Wars and Star Trek so much, I mean, I think we covered that very well. How okay. about the Expanse versus the Firefly universe? So in the, in the Expanse, we have. Uh, Those are pretty comparable. You know, hard science fiction, advanced technology, um, you know, traveling within the solar system. And Firefly, very similar. You know, mm -hmm. we have advanced technology. Yep. Um, I'll just put my chip down, because you didn't say which one you would pick. Would, did you pick District 12, or would you pick... Uh, no, that was my that was mine yeah, for you two. Oh, he did District 12, kind yeah, of. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. So I would <laughs> definitely pick I would definitely pick Firefly. Why, because you want to be a cowboy? Yeah, because I'm thinking, like, <laughs> there's, you know... The Expanse is going to a very scary, serious yeah. place. In the, in Firefly, there's no spoilers. Lot, I'm still watching season. Lots two. of places <laughs> to go. There's lots of places to go. Yeah. Lots of different environments. If you ha if you could make enough money, you could buy a ship and you could you know yeah. ride the frontier. That would be not so bad. Yeah. I mean, I think that Firefly had a more fun vibe to it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it seemed like there was more yeah. possibilities there. The Expanse is a great science fiction yeah. universe, by the way. Um, I lo top love notch. it for top-notch hard science fiction, really well thought out. The, the geopolitical you know, mess going on is fantastic. And then they throw the curveball in there of the alien contact. It's great. Great setup for a series. Um, would I want to live there? Yeah. You know, that's, I, think, I think Firefly Universe just seems like more fun. Yeah. <laughs> And more options. I mean, right? Seems like there's, there's more options. More, there's too. more habitable planets. Like in, in Expanse, you're like you're on the Earth, or you're a Belter, or or you're on Mars. I mean, you know, that's not it's a lot of choices yeah. right there. Yeah, and the in Earth ter you know, in terms of breathing fresh air and open skies. And so in Firefly, you just have to learn Mandarin Chinese, and you're good. Yeah, you're good. I mean, the Earth <laughs> in, in the Expanse, the Earth, you know, like there's like you can see post. Uh, climate change mm -hmm. situation there. Mars, man, I mean, they're terraforming. It's it's basically a, a, a sand pile, even though, you know, it's, yeah. it, they can live there. And forget living on the belt. Who the hell would want to be in the, in the belt? That's yeah, that, even, even rich in the belt, not, not that great, yeah. right? I mean, no, I wouldn't mm -hmm. want to do that. That wouldn't be nice. Yeah. Um, and also, Firefly also has has more advanced technology. I mean, it seems like that. Sure, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, plus they have companions, so that's a good. Definitely, so yes. that's a bonus. Thank you. So what do you got, okay. what's your pick? For, for my choice, would you rather live in the Marvel Cinematic Universe or oh. the DC Universe? Holy crap. Now, we're just a regular Joe, right? Yeah. Not a superhero. As far as you know. I, uh, this is going to sound kind of funny, but I think I would, uh, I don't know, this is hard. I think I would rather live in a world with Superman in it. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, okay. Yeah, but All there's right. also supervillains. There's also... Of course, there's supervillains in both universes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at, I mean, the things are going bad. But and, Zod. Zod yeah, it. yeah, but also half the people on the planet didn't just die. <laughs> <laughs> Plus the universe. They're coming back. So yeah, no, uh, I'd have to agree because. But you know, uh, the, man, it's. I, mean, I got to think about that one a bit. Yeah, there. It's DC know, the, universe is darker though. It is darker. What if you live in Gotham? Gotham is. Yeah, but you could always leave Gotham. Gotham. Is terrible. Yeah, Gotham is 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 hostile. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I hear I hear what you're saying. Which has more existential threats? <laughs> They're both pretty. Bad. I would say that I would say that Marvel does. Mm. I mean, there's yeah. th there's things in yeah. the DC universe like Galactus that would get, eat a planet. You know what I mean? There there are gods in the Marvel universe though. Yeah, 
they're both dangerous. When you have super anything, there's super good and super bad. So they're both, they're, you know, the, the aesthetic in the Marvel universe, and largely from what everyone knows about the movies, it's mm -hmm. basically modern day with yeah. superheroes. And in DC, right. we have it's places like it's a little bit of a dystopian. Yeah, there's a dystopian day. bend to it. But but with having uh, having Superman, it, to me, it would have would be a, an emotional, profound hook. You know, there, there's something mm -hmm. special about Superman. You know, imagine if there really were a Superman. Mm. You would, you know, you'd be hard pressed to not idolize him and, and model yourself after him. You know, I mean, there's lots of lots of other cool heroes too, but Superman is is, is iconic. Yeah, but what if Stark gave me his nano armor? He won't, Bob. He just won't do it. He doesn't <sighs> give a shit about you. <laughs> yeah, but Stark is a good point because seriously, his That's arc reactor. Tech. You know, the arc reactor is the end game for global warming, right? Yep. Just, Spark those things up, and we're good. And, and eventually, I mean, think about his his nano armor yeah. uh, from from Infinity War. That was the, amazing. I yeah. know that's too far. And, though. Imagine if he had <laughs> if he gave that to all of his buddies. Right. And so they they get this wicked nano armor that that just as like a yeah. A why isn't there an army of Iron Men yeah. defending Holy, the Earth? Yeah, Bob and I were having this discussion. Why doesn't he have his armor with him in it, and then ten more of him? Like ten well, more. Well, he nanos, does. Nanos. In the movies, he does. He has like a suit of armor that he can control. He has, yeah, but he has like what? twenty of them that fight on their own. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but yeah, he did do that in. in uh, oh, I, think I have a hundred. I think yeah, it was a third. Yeah. But the, that, that nano armor just is a whole, a whole new level. It's, so, it's a game it's breaker. So, it's yeah. so amazing. It was just. It, it's just so adaptable. The, the yeah. way that he just it morphed into whatever he needed instantly. Of course, it's it was too it, powerful. It verges on. On just like, come on, even nanotech is gonna would have trouble mm -hmm. doing that that fast. I see. But I like Iron such Man. Such a such I a like fantastic. Iron Man at his basics. I like that he could fly. I like that he has you know the the weaponry mm -hmm. and the re repulsors and things like that. I don't need all that other stuff. It's cool. It, it's interesting, but it also makes him super powerful. Like you could you could extrapolate that into places where you're like, why wouldn't he be doing this with that yeah. technology? It, that's I don't know. I love but it too much. Anyway, I love it too much. let me alter yours a little bit. Okay. Because. You know, we could we could circle the drain about the, which universe you'd rather be in. Um, we can go back and forth, but let's just say, just for fun, right yeah. now, that you are a superhero in one of these universes, right? A mid-level superhero. Where, which universe would you rather be in? Um, hmm. I think probably Marvel. Me too. I pick Marvel. More of a community of heroes yeah. there. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Or, absolutely. Or, but you could absolutely. join the Justice League. Let's say that you're yeah. powerful enough just to get into the Justice League. <laughs> so you'd be the least powerful member of the Justice League. Yeah, you hang out with Batman the... and Wonder Woman and yeah, Superman. Aquaman. Aquaman. Yeah, Aquaman. Aquaman is... Until you die, you'd be the first one to die since yeah. you're the weakest. That's true. <laughs> I would definitely rather be in Marvel. Yeah, I think Marvel. Yeah. 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 Okay, so. <laughs> all right, man. We, this was a great discussion. If I'm I, still in my head are all the worlds we didn't mention. I know. Yeah, there's, so, there's so many in literature and comic books. Yeah. Um, I think the people watching this show realize that we don't want to. Yeah, do, know. You know, we're not here doing a 12-hour show. Yeah. You know, we're we're, we're picking the, the low kind of hanging fruit of ideas here. But you know, look, we, we did mention the most, the biggest and most obvious, and the ones mm -hmm. that we that we love the most. Thanks for watching the show. You can get in touch with us at alphaquadrant6.com. That's alpha quadrant and the number six com where you can get links to our Facebook page, to our Patreon page, and to our Facebook page. And please do email us with any ideas that you have for future shows. The ball will cost me. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> Is it funny or stupid? It's funny. Yes.